breaking news, the IBF champion, Matias, he came out savagely calling out Regis Prograis. That's right, not Devin Haney, but Regis Prograis. Where Matias said, quote, Yo, Prograis, when you see this interview, please give me the opportunity to show the world I'm going to send you to the hospital after the fight. I'm going to send you to the hospital, and you know it. End of the quote. To make matters worse, with the next breath, Matias said he's not interested in the Devin Haney fight because Devin Haney is not a draw. He started trashing Devin Haney pay-per-view numbers as if Matias himself is a draw. Like, you can't make this up. Why is Matias talking about pay-per-view numbers when he never fought on pay-per-view? Man, forget about a pay-per-view fight. Matias never headlined a fight, a free fight on his own. He always fought on undercars. The first fight he's going to headline is in Puerto Rico coming up in June. That's his first main event of his entire career. So what is he talking about? Devin Haney was headlining back in 2019, five years ago. Devin Haney was more popular than Matias five years ago when he was 19 years old let alone now. Devin Haney is top three in the game. He's like the Floyd May with a ticket to Matias. Get this duck talk out of here. Now here is exactly what Matias had to say in Spanish. Check it out. Hey, make them for, for Haney. Haney, don't, don't make them my, my name. And the chicken father, uh, Bill Haney, don't talk in shit, please. Dile que se enfoque en venderle en esta pelea. Que las últimas peleas que él ha hecho en Per Per View, que tenemos los, el resumen, y él no vende. Si con Ryan García, que vendió con el bond un millón, él no vende ni 500, dile que se puede retirar. Pero... Yo, Progray, when you see this video, this interview, please give me the opportunity to show the world you're gonna say i'm gonna send you to the hospital after the fight me please give me the opportunity me me i'm gonna send you to the hospital and you know it mm. i guess Devin haney once again turned the boogeyman to the duck man this man he's saying Devin is basically not a draw but he wants to fight regis who Devin haney already beat and we know Devin is a bigger draw than Regis. How you explain that? Devin Haney put fear in Matias' heart. What I can't understand or comprehend is why supposedly the boogeyman Matias is calling out the loser and not the winner of Devin Haney versus Regis Pro Grace fight. I thought he was gonna be calling out Devin Haney to unify. Instead, he's calling out Regis who lost to Devin Haney. Now, there's nothing wrong with losing. Losing is not the end of the story. You can come back and get a W. You can come back and be the champion. Matter of fact, I like Matias versus Regis fight stylistic wise. However, I'm puzzled by Matias calling out the loser instead of the winner. When the winner is available, both fighters fight on the zone. The fight can easily be made. Both fighters work with Eddie Hearn directly. So what's the problem? Why is Matias calling out Prograis instead of Devin Haney? I told you guys before, everyone is a boogeyman until the A-class boogeyman, Devin Haney, pulls up. As soon as Devin Haney moved up to 140 pounds, instantly everyone started accusing him of ducking Matias. Matias, on the other hand, is the boogeyman at 140. He revealed that he wanted to sign with top rank, however, he couldn't because Top rank wouldn't guarantee him the Tio from a Lopez fight, meaning Tio was clout chasing and bluffing about fighting him. Because when it came down to it, Top rank couldn't even guarantee him the Tio fight on ESPN. So that's why he decided to sign with Matchroom because all of the PBC fighters as well didn't want to fight him. But the moment Devin Haney raises his hand to fight Matias, when Devin Haney said, Matias is not a boogeyman to me. All of a sudden, Matias is calling out the fighter Devin Haney already beat, who's not a champion. 
Devin Haney is the champion, the WBC champion, the number one guy at 140. The money guy at 140. The pound for pound guy at 140. The everything guy at 140. He is him. But Matias doesn't want to fight him because according to the Z side Matias, Devin Haney can sell pay-per-views. Even though Devin Haney is 10 times a bigger star than he is, he wants Devin to be a thousand times bigger star than he is in order to fight him. 10 to 20 times is not enough. To make matters worse, he wants to fight the guy Devin Haney be for way less money than he's going to make fighting Devin Haney. Due to one reason and one reason only, and that's the Regis Prograce fight is a more winnable fight. Because the way Matias views Devin Haney is a guarantee L, is a guarantee ass whooping, getting taken straight to school. But we already know what time it is. Even on another interview, Matias says something around the lines that he's not really that interested in the Devin Haney fight because Devin Haney runs. You know, it's so crazy. The fact that Matias was calling Devin Haney a chicken and now is Matias that's behaving like a chicken. Respectfully. I told you guys before. Bill Haney already called Matias bluff. Immediately after the Regis Prograce fight, Bill Haney called Matias team. And Matias team ended up overpricing themselves, asking for four million to fight Bill Haney. Then after that, to justify the situation, Matias said that he talked to the wrong manager or promoter. And he gave him the right number. So when Bill Haney called supposedly the right manager slash promoter, that guy ended up hanging up on Bill. However, Bill stayed on his helmet and when he was able to get in touch with him again, Bill asked him, we wanna fight the boogeyman, how much is it gonna cost to fight the boogeyman? Matias, promoter slash manager told Bill, we're gonna get back to you on that in a week. And they never gave Bill Haney a call back. Till this day, we all know what time it is. And now Matias is following that up with, he wants to fight Regis Prograce instead of Devin Haney. To the point where he's begging for the fight. He's even telling Regis Prograce, please fight me. Like what? If you didn't know any better, you will mistake Regis for being the champion and Matias for being like a nobody, not the champion. It's crazy because if the roles was reversed, if everyone was accusing Matias of ducking Devin Haney, however, Devin Haney came out and said, look, man, I don't want to fight Matias. Then Devin Haney followed that up with by calling out the guy Matias just knocked out or made quit. What will people say then? They will call Devin Haney all top of ducks. But Matias does it and nobody want to call him a duck for ducking the A-class boogeyman Devin Haney. We all know what time it is. I've been telling you guys from day one. All you have to do is say smoke and Devin Haney will pop up. With the opinions out of the door and the facts laid out on the table, go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below and to be continued on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Like I said, my main focus is Ryan Garcia. You are one of the few fighters who called out Matias to fight. If you can't get any of the big names, is that the fight you want this year? Yeah, um, like I said, I'm willing to fight the, the, the best fighters in the world, the, 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 the biggest fights. Uh, if it makes sense, then yeah, we can get home. But like I said, you know, I'm, I don't want to keep talking about you know, future opponents and yeah. I still got to get past this one in front of me. Yeah, I understand that, but you know I got to ask you, brother. Sure. <laughs> When Bill, when Bill uh, reached out to Matias, they never called him back. So now that Matias signed with Eddie Hearn, do you think the fight now is going to be easier to make? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it could be could be much easier to make now. Um, you know, me and Eddie got a great relationship. Um, yeah, no, I think the fight could, could be much easier to make. But you know, I sent my dad out to to, to make the, the best fight happen. So you know, whoever whoever it is. Um, I'm gonna be ready for it. What are your three dream fights that you can have? Dream fights. Me and Tank, me and Matias, me and Tio. That would be huge. Devin, do, do you, you think, think it'll happen? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Oh, it depends. You know, I know they I know they want me. I know I'm the guy that, you know, 
I'm the I'm the guy that bullies the bullies. I'm the guy that steps up. You know what I'm saying? When nobody wants to, I'm the guy that you know steps in and saves the day. So they might need me to come save the day and go fight um, Matias. They might need me to go because you know guys say they, they that they that that they want to become champion, but then they say they that oh it's a weight um, hydration hydration limit on uh, the IBF rules or something like that. You can't you you what since when did we ever do this? It's, you've never been a world champion before. You've never accomplished nothing, and you talking about a, a, a um, rehydration a rehydration limit. Like you, somebody. You're not. You're not nobody. So, like I said, they might need me to step in. You know, say the day and uh, bully the bully, fight the guys that these guys don't want to fight, and uh, I will. You what do you think of? And I said, I said, oh, I never. I don't know about. You know, I'm not really interested in being undisputed, but now I am. So at 140. At 140. What do you make of like the boogeyman aura? Like the, they're trying to portray to on um, Matias. Nah, they're using that to sell him. They're using that to sell him, but he ain't no boogeyman to me. Mm -hmm. And. After this fight, if he want if he, if he want to explore the fight, I'm no no no. If he wants to fight, he's with he's with Eddie. I'm 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 over here with Eddie. Me and Eddie work together. That fight could be made. You still interested in 140? If Tio want it, I'm over here at top ring right now. We can make that fight too. So <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm I'm you're everywhere. I'm, I'm everywhere. Listen, Do you I'm, think it's it? It, it, it don't matter. I'm, I want to make the, the biggest fights happen with the best fighters in the world because I truly believe I'm the best. And I'm not and I'm not just talking. I'm not on Twitter just saying this. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm for real. It seems and, like... And my, my, check my resume. It, it shows. It seems like you're like one of the only ones actually doing it where other fighters are just attaching themselves to one and you're but freely the, going around. Yeah. And, of the younger guys, I am the only yeah. one. Real, they and just announced Subriere and Matias over here at Matching Boxing. If you can't get uh, Tank Davis... I think that it's a very real possibility to fight with Subriel, the one-armed bandit, anytime. I called him up. I called him up after the fight like I do. As soon as Devin handled his business, I called to see what's cracking, who's talking about what. I mean, and you know, they told me to, to call him back. Uh, I called him back. Then they told me that they were going to call me, and they never called. So now he got a new management, new team, and maybe a new outlook on it. But he's still a one-armed bandit. For sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. He did get in contact with. The yes, woman. sir. That's where I'm going. Um. So I told Bill. I said, I said, Bill, out. We don't need a uh, a uh, uh, podcast. We don't need these guys to start negotiating our fight. You know me. I know you. So I did a three way, and they spoke to each other. Um. Orengo invited him to Arizona so they can talk about it. Um. You know, he was asking Orengo to give a price. You know, to give a, a an amount. Orengo's a smart man, bro. Orengo's a businessman. He's not going to shoot a price out there. He wants to negotiate. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and like I said, he's in all his rights to do so. You know, and, you know, so, I mean, sometimes fights happen, sometimes fights don't. Hopefully this does. I can't negotiate. I'm just a trainer. You know, I can't negotiate. Um, I would love that fight to happen. But at the end of the day, they got to come to an agreement. Not me, you know, but I put them together. Um, I was on the three-way line. Um, Bill was very respectful. You know, just as Juan, Juan is a, is, is a great man. Um, so I believe they got something going on. You know, I believe they got something going on. Uh, Juan doesn't speak English that well, so so that's why I was on the on the on the three line there and stuff. But um, they got yeah, they spoke and they they spoke and and Bill's a man of his word and he kept it and he kept saying, "I want to fight the boogeyman." You know, I want to fight the boogeyman. How much is it to fight the boogeyman? You know, but uh, uh so. I mean, nobody here is scared of nobody. I don't know who told him that we said that Devin was scared or, or, or who, you know, you know how media is and things like that, you know, but we've, I've always respected Devin and I'll, and I'll always respect him and I'll always.